Hello, everyone. I am very much thankful to Iskon Gujarat for providing me this opportunity. My topic for today's presentation is text metatomidine and ketamine in pediatric patients as procedural sedation. So, after taking a brief review about the various aspects of pediatric procedural sedation, I will be talking mainly about text metatomidine and ketamine as individual drugs and then about the combination of text metatomidine and ketamine. Pediatric procedural sedation has expanded in volume and demand over the past decade. Everything from the name to the drugs, practitioners, monitoring guidelines, and billing codes has evolved. In contrast, very few new sedatives have developed and many are not approved for children. Current sedation guidelines are often contradictory and vary both between and within specialty groups. As we all know, children are not just small adults, more likely to have airway obstruction during sedation due to long, larger tongue, epiglottis and occiput. Children desaturate more quickly after apnea than even moderately ill adults, require more frequent sedation dosing and sedation levels are difficult to assess. More likely and quickly can go to deeper levels of sedation. Drug doses calculation be based on precise weight measurements and not on parents estimate. According to American College of Emergency Physicians, uh, procedural sedation analysis here, now we'll be calling it PSA, is a technique of administering sedatives or dissociative agents with or without analgesics to induce a state that allows the patient to tolerate unpleasant procedures while maintaining cardiorespiratory function. Goals and aims, guard the patient's safety welfare, minimize physical discomfort and pain, control anxiety, minimize psychological trauma and maximize the potential for amnesia control behavior and or movements to allow safe completion of procedure, return the patient to a state in which safe discharge from medical supervision is possible. Intent is to achieve these goals while assuring that the patient is able to intermittently maintain oxygenation, airway control, and respiratory functions. These are a few previously used terminologies like moderate sedation, also popularly known as conscious sedation, is a drug-induced depression of consciousness in which patient responds purposefully Deep sedation, patient cannot be easily aroused, but respond purposefully after repeated or painful stimulation. And a special type of sedation, a dissociative sedation, is a trance-like cataleptic state characterized by profound analgesia and amnesia with retention of protective airway reflexes, spontaneous respiration, and cardiovascular stability. There are various sedation state scales which are used. The popularly used are University of Michigan sedation scale is an observational tool that scores the patient's response to stimuli for assessment of depth of sedation in children aged 6 months to 12 years. It scores a 0 to 4. The conscious sedation, the previously used term, is University of Michigan sedation scale equal, equal to or less than 2. These are the other details about behavioral response, airway, spontaneous ventilation, cardiovascular function during minimal sedation, moderate sedation, deep sedation, and general anesthesia. Ramsey sedation score is amongst the oldest and most widely used of the scales in both adults and children. Recently, the new six-point pediatric sedation state scale intended to analyze the quality rather than the depth of sedation has been described in 2017. In this, the state two is considered to be the ideal state. After sedation discharge readiness can be evaluated by alert recovery score. The alert recovery score takes into account the activity, respiration, circulation, consciousness, and color. And the total score must be more than eight at conclusion of monitoring for readiness to discharge. Some prerequisites for PSA, emergency resuscitation equipments appropriate for pediatric patients should be immediately available. Soap me is a useful mnemonic, as is for suction catheters, O for oxygen supply delivery equipments, A for airway equipments, P for positive pressure delivery systems, M for monitors, especially pulse oximeter, entitled CO2, and NIBP. E is for emergency cart with various drugs and uh, supplies for vascular access. The pre-procedure fasting guidelines, as for any other procedures, like clear liquids up to two hours, breast milk for four hours, infant formula, non-human milk, and light milk up to six hours. 
procedures requiring sedation. There are some non-invasive procedures and some invasive and painful procedures like non-invasive like MRI, CT, other imaging studies, radiation therapy, electroencephalography, and invasive procedures like various biopsies, endoscopies, bronchoscopy, paracentesis, pericardiosynthesis, burn dressing, fracture reduction, etc. The choice of sedative agents, the targeted depth of sedation, and the agents used largely depend upon the anticipated degree of pain, allowable amount of motion during procedure, and the following patient factors. The first and foremost is comorbidities of the patient or the kid, the AS status of the kid, the fasting status, age and developmental level, ability to cooperate, degree of anxiety, any prior problems with specific medications. The commonly used drugs for pediatric procedure sedation nowadays are medazolam, propofol, etomidate, ketamine, and the new all-in-one drug, which is dexmedetone D which can be used by almost all the routes. And its combination with other drugs is having very satisfactory results. And its combination with ketamine is just magical. The other combination which is commonly used is ketamine with propofol, that is ketofol. Now coming to dexmetotomidine in pediatrics. Though off-label, dexmetotomidine has a firm position, pediatric anesthesiologist's armamentarium. Its respiratory sparing effects and bioavailability by various routes are some of the valued features. Highly selective alpha-2 agonists provide sedation that mimics natural sleep, anxiolysis, sympathalysis, and analgesic sparing effects without respiratory depression. The off-label use is usually acceptable if no suitable alternatives are available or used in accordance with the current medical opinion by experienced clinicians. Recently, the potential organ protective effects with preserving neurocognitive function has put it in the forefront of clinical and based research. Pharmacokinetics and dynamics in children, they change markedly from neonate to infant to adult. It's a highly lipophilic drug, high volume of distribution, predominantly bound to plasma proteins, crosses blood brain barrier, rapid distribution phase of six minutes, elimination half-life 1.8 hours, broken down by hepatic enzymes to inactive metabolites. Clearance in neonates and infants is reduced to to immaturity of elimination pathways. Clearance in neonates is around 42.4% of adult values. By, it reaches to around 84.4% by one year of age. Hemodynamics, dose dependent effect on mean arterial pressure and heart rate. The median effective dose intravenously over five seconds without significant hemodynamic compromise was found to be 0.49 micrograms per kg in healthy children. There is transient dose dependent hypotension can occur more frequently with large boluses and more likely in infants than older children. Bradycardia up to 30% of the baseline should be expected. The use of anticholinergics to treat bradycardia should be with caution as there can be transient hypotension with the use of anticholinergics. And bradycardia needs treatment only when concomitant vital signs are abnormal. It usually resolves after reducing or stopping dexmedine infusion. The features of dexmedine sedation is child sedated but arousable, alert, and respond without uncomfortable delirium like state. It resembles natural sleep. Uh, may return to sedation again. No clouding of consciousness like drugs acting on GABA system. Dexmed sedation lacks amnestic properties. This is a rather disadvantage of dexmed. Analgesic opiate sparing effect lasts quite longer than its sedative effect. The special indications, apart from its routine use in the, some non-invasive procedures, Dexmit, even at a higher than recommended doses, Dexmit maintains airway patency and tone in OSA kits. So it is ideal choice for drug-induced sleep endoscopy and dynamic airway imaging for EEG in patients with Autism and neurobehavioral disorders, useful due to its non eeg seizure altering effects. Recent literature supports intranasal dexmit sedation for pulmonary function tests in children aged one to three years. Recently, the use for palliative care, recent interest in using dexmit to provide sedation, anxiolysis, and analgesia for pediatric patients with severe symptoms near the end of life. Recently, Italian drug agency passed a landmark decision approving Dexmet via intranasal and intravenous route for palliative care of children outside the ICU setting 
and unresponsive to conventional therapy. It's used in intranasal dexmet for sedating child with epidermal lysis bullosa and one with refractory dystonia has been found to be effective without side effects and tachyphylaxis when used at home for up to three months. Uh, rapid bolus of dexmet along with high concentrations of volatile anesthetics should be avoided. Cardiac conduction abnormalities you should be with caution. Septic shock, concurrent treatment with decoxin, beta adrenergic blockers, calcium channel blockers, small inhibitors, and other agents that predispose to bradycardia and hypotension. The dexmet should be used with caution. And also in hepatic diseases, its action may get prolonged. Caution in infants and neonates. Caution should be exercised when dexmet sedation is used in infants and neonates, receiving epidural analgesia without support from external warming devices. The infants depend more on non shivering thermogenesis than on shivering and vasoconstriction. The dexmet interferes with non shivering thermogenesis, so there is always a potential for hypothermia as a result of inhibition of lipolysis. Longer elimination half life and clearance in premature, so lower doses of dexmet are recommended. Routes of administration, dexmet has been described by almost all routes, intravenous, intramuscular, intranasal, oral, buccal, and recently by subcutaneous route of administration. Intravenously, the loading dose of 0.5 to 1 mcg per kg, followed by 0.2 to 0.7 mcg per kg per hour as an infusion. Intramuscular, it is 1 to 4 micrograms per kg. Intranasally, it is 1 to 3 micrograms per kg. And the bioavailability of dexmet by oral route is very poor, around 16% only. So this route is not recommended. Buccal route of administration can be very challenging in pediatric patients. Intranasal route needs special mention as it is the most used extravascular route of dexmet administration in children. Bioavailability by a nasal route, which is around 40.7%, and buccal, which is 81%, differ quite markedly. But still, the buccal dexmet has not been shown to be superior to intranasal dexmet. Intranasal dexmet is most convenient, minimally invasive, and can be delivered by droplet method or mucosal atomizer devices. There is no nasal irritation like intranasal midazolam. Additional benefits reduce post of nausea vomiting and reduce need for rescue analgesics. Time to peak effect with a dose of 2 to 3 micrograms per kg. In children aged 0 to 11 years, was found to be around 45 minutes. Some disadvantages of intranasal dexmet when used alone sedative effects are concentration dependent. At plasma concentration between 0.2 to 0.3 nanograms per ml, patient may be in arousable sedation. And a plasma concentration above 1.9 nanograms per ml, patient will be in deep sedation and difficult to arouse. Heart rate is also dose dependent. And so, Increase in the dose may lead to decrease in the heart rate. The dexmet in your sleep is like natural sleep. Even with high dose of dexmet, child may get awakened by external stimuli leading to failure of sedation. For more effectiveness, better to combine it with other drugs. This is mucosal automizer device used for internal delivery. This is how to use it. Connect to automizer, inject half drug into one nostril, inject the remainder into other nostril. This was a study comparing the buccal and nasal dexmet in pre-medication for pediatric patients and they found that the intranasal administration of 1 microgram per kg is more effective than buccal administration of 1 microgram per kg. Coming to ketamine, ketamine is a fencyclidine derivative, non-competitive NMDA and glutamate receptor antagonist, dissociative anesthetic with sedative analgesic and amnestic properties. It has those dependent effects, anxiolysis and analgesia at lower doses, while providing dissociative sedation, amnesia and analgesia at higher doses. It has been given a level A recommendation in American College of Emergency Physician policy statements for both safety and efficacy in providing PSA for children in emergency department. Some salient features of dissociative state, child passes into trance-like state, Eyes may remain open, normal or slightly increased muscle tone, analgesia is usually excellent, amnesia is total, airway reflexes are maintained, slight increase in blood pressure, heart rate, astigmas and lacrimation is typical. Indications providing sedation analgesia for moderate to severe short painful procedures like suturing, 
fracture reductions and the removal of foreign body. Relative contraindications, children below three months, active pulmonary infections, cardiovascular diseases where increase in heart rate and workload is not desirable, suspected or increase in intracranial pressure, glaucoma or acute globe injuries, thyroid osteosis for five years, psychosis. Most commonly given either intravenously or intramuscularly. Intramuscularly, it is one to two milligrams per kg over a minute. Repeat 0.5 milligrams per kg every 10 minutes as needed. Onset within one to two minutes and duration is 15 to 30 minutes. Intramuscularly, it is three to five milligrams per kg. Onset is within five to 10 minutes and duration 30 to 60 minutes. Possibly higher adverse respiratory events, higher rates of hemesis and longer recovery period with intramuscular ketamine. So whenever possible, intravenous ketamine is desirable. Side effects, random purposeless movements, muscle twitching, rash and vocalizations, tachycardia hypertension can be transient. Hypersalivation is quite frequent with repeat doses. Transient laryngospasm, apnea or respiratory depression can occur. MSS is more common with intramuscular and children over 8 years of age. Unpleasant emergent phenomena, more common beyond mid adolescence and decreased by positive psychology prior to administrations. Recovery agitation can be seen in 1.4% of the cases. Now coming to the most magical and the most effective and safe combination that is Texcate. A literature search was conducted by PubMed, Lilax and Embass to identify 21 articles from 2015 to 19 that address the use of dexmethetomidine and ketamine together during anesthetic procedures in population between birth to 18 years old. The literature is favorable to the use of Dexcat for invasive and non-invasive procedures inside and outside the operating room, presenting an attractive profile for pediatric patients. Combination of Dexmate and ketamine makes pharmacological sense. They balance the hemodynamic and adverse effects of each other. Dexmate prevents tachycardia, hypertension, salivation, and emergence from ketamine, and ketamine prevents the bradycardia and hypertension caused by Dexmate. Ketamine also speeds the onset of sedation and eliminates the slow onset of the experiment. Most effective regime is bolus dose of 0.5 to 1 mcg per kg of dexmate plus 1 to 2 milligram per kg of ketamine mixed together, diluted and given slowly over a minute to initiate target sedation. Maintenance is 0.5 mcg per kg of dexmate plus 1 milligram per kg ketamine as needed. Co-administration can be intramuscular, buccal, but intranasal is the preferred route when intravenous is not feasible or desired. Lack of recovery related agitation is significant. Potential utility of the combo for procedural sedation in kids with compromised cardiovascular respiratory functions in pediatric MRI. Combination of intramuscular dexmate 1.5 micrograms per kg plus ketamine 2 milligram per kg was superior to either drug given individually. Useful combination for securing difficult airways in infants, toddlers, and developmentally challenged children while maintaining spontaneous respiration. In drug-induced sleep endoscopy for OSA in children, more success rate and less incidence of photo desaturation was found. Its successful use has been reported for children undergoing cardiac catheterization, upper GI scopies, extracorporeal shock, heterotropy, muscle biopsies, mediational mass excision, etc. The hemodynamics with Dexcat, the heart rate changes with Dex and Dexcat administration, you can see in the pink box, the heart rate is very nicely maintained with Dexcat combination as compared to Dex alone. As is the mean arterial pressure, there can be initial hypertension when Dex is used alone, but with Dexcat, it is usually well maintained. These are some articles from over the last 10 years. Uh, this is dexmetritomidine ketamine for sedation during spinal anesthesia in children in 2010 by Joseph Tobias. The conclusion was the combination provides effective sedation during spinal anesthesia in infants and children. This is dexmetritomidine ketamine, an effective alternative for procedural sedation by Tobias again. The available literature except to one trial is favorable regarding the utility of the combination for procedural sedation for the studies with direct comparisons to other regimes appear warranted for both invasive and non-invasive procedures.
This was in 2013 Ketodex, a combination of uh, Dexcat for upper gyroscopies in children, a preliminary report in 46 children aged 2 to 12 years. And the results of this case series show that the drug combination not only promises to be clinically effective, but also safe for upper gastrointestinal endoscopies in children. A research report comparison of combination of dexmetri to median ketamine to propofol or propofol syrup to range for drug induced sleep endoscopy in children. The results suggested the those regime of propofol used alone or in combination with seoplurin appears to be associated with more oxygen desaturations and a lower rate of successful completion than a combination of dexmetridomidine and ketamine during dice in children with OAC. This is a case report of intramuscular dexmid and ketamine for provided, which provided effective sedation for transhepatic central venous access in a 13-year-old with acute ventriculitis. A research report of analysis of 17,948 pediatric patients undergoing procedural sedation with combination of intranasal dexmitrate with ketamine. The conclusion was procedural sedation using combination is associated with acceptable effectiveness with very low rates of adverse events. This was an original article about uh, comparison between midazolam ketamine versus dexmetri to within ketamine for anesthesia of pediatric patients undergoing cardiac catheterizations. And they concluded that the dexcat combination was superior to midazolam ketamine because of the less intraoperative ketamine consumption required and shorter recovery time. This was again propofol ketamine versus dexmetriptyline ketamine for sedation during upper gut gastrointestinal endoscopy for in pediatric patients, a randomized control trial, clinical trial. The propofol ketamine combination was associated with a shorter recovery time, while the dexcat combination showed less need for additional doses. This was in American Journal of Emergency Medicine, dexmetriptyline in combination of ketamine for pediatric procedural sedation for pre-medication. A meta-analysis study was done, and the result is better sedation outcome than dex or ket by shortening the onset of sedation and recovery while maintaining hemodynamic and respiratory stability with low incidence of adverse events. This was published in January 2021, the intranasal dexmetriptyline plus ketamine for procedural sedation, adaptive randomized controlled non-inferiority multicentral trial, a statistical analysis plan. This is an ongoing study using different dose combinations of individual drug to evaluate the non-inferiority of intranasal dexcat or intranasal dexcat. These are some procedures which are commonly done with dexcat and either regional or local anesthesia. This is circumcision one year old with dexcat and caudal with ETCO2 monitoring. This is four years old for intraocular lens implant, dexcat plus peribulbar block by the surgeon. I'll just quickly go through this because of the time limit. This is endoscopic foreign body removal esophagus. This was a battery cell three days old with dexcat and 10% LA spray. This is three and a half years for lacrimal probing using dexcat. Syringe is done bit by bit or avoided. Two and a half years, 12 kg congenital hernia, dexcat plus spinal. This is congenital hernia, one and a half years, nine kg, dexcat plus caudal with NIBP ETCO2 and SPO2 monitoring. This is a one year old, 14 kg, hemoglobin was just five grams. OS with difficult venous access and airway, large abscess on the medial side of the thigh. Venous access was on the left foot and dexcat was the only anesthetic. This is two and a half years, 9 kg for systolithotomy and repositional dilatation for phimosis, dexcat for spine. This is two months old kit for tenotomy, for TEV, dexcat plus local. This is five months old, 6.5 kg neck abscess, then under dexcat alone. This was a uh, two years old, 9 kg lacerated wound soft palate. Suturing was done under dexcat plus local anesthesia. 
This is 20 days old neonet with extra digits on both hands. Weight was just 3.5 kg. Text kit plus local anesthesia. This is six years old, fracture both bone forearm, K wire fixation under interscalene block after text kit sedation. This is 14 years old, 30 kg, less of tendon repair for claw hand due to leprosy. Text kit plus local anesthesia. These are all the different procedures. I made a collage of the difficult intubation situations in kits done with DEX kit. These are a few of the references. And thank you very much for patient listening. Thank you.